problem number 57, we'd like to determine the intervals on which the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 1 is concave up and concave down. All right. <clears throat> um, determining where a function is concave up and concave down is very similar to figuring out where it's increasing and decreasing. The only difference is we don't find our critical values anymore for the first derivative. We find our critical values for the second derivative. So instead of just taking one derivative and finding critical points, I want to take two derivatives to find my critical points. Uh, so I like to call these things second order critical values just to remind myself that they're not actually the critical points of a function because the critical points of a function are critical points for the first derivative, uh, not the second derivative. So I like to call these things something else. Let's call, call them second order critical values, and that's what I want to find. So to find these second order critical values to figure out where things are concave up and concave down, I need a second derivative of this function. So let's take a second derivative, find these second order critical values, and then I can use those critical values to find where it's concave up and concave down. Okay, first thing we need is a second derivative. So I have my function. I can take a first derivative of this function, and the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of negative 2x cubed is negative 6x squared, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So that's my first derivative, but I need a second derivative, so let's do it again. I get f double prime of x is equal to derivative of 4x cubed would be 12x squared, and the derivative of negative 6x squared would be negative 12x. All right, so here's my second derivative, and I want to find what are the second order critical values of this function. In other words, where is this guy equal to 0? So I set it equal to 0. I get 0 equals, notice that I could pull a 12x out of this thing. If I did, I get 12x times uh, x minus 1. And so now this is very simple to solve. x is either 0 or x is 1. So x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. These are my second order critical values x equals 0 and x equals 1. Now that I have these second order critical values, let's put them on a number line. So here's my number line. And I've got a 0 to put on there. I've got a 1 to put on there. And now I need to test points. Now remember, this is the second derivative, uh, not the first derivative. So I'm going to be plugging these values in to the second derivative not to the first derivative, not to the original function. I need to be plugging into the second derivative. Uh, but I still test points just like I would uh, if I were finding if something were increasing or decreasing. So let's just test some things. Back here I could test negative 1 into the second derivative. So I get f double prime of minus 1. Let's see. Uh, I plug in, that would be a 12 times minus 1 squared minus 12 times minus 1, which is equal to, well, minus 1 squared is 1, so this is 12 plus 12 is 24, which is positive, so I put positives in here. Now I test something, let's just test something bigger than 1. Uh, how about 2? So f double prime of 2 would be 12 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2. Let's see. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 12 is 48. And minus 12 times 2, which is minus 24, which is also 24, which is positive. So over here, we get positives. Now I have a guess that in between here, we might have negatives, but I suppose we should figure it out for ourselves. Uh, let's plug in something in between. How about a half? So f double prime of 1 half would be 12 times 1 half squared 
minus 12 times 1 half. Uh, 1 half squared is a fourth. A fourth times 12 is 3. So that's 3 minus a half of 12 is 6. So minus 6 is negative 3. And yes, indeed, I get some minuses in there. Okay. But remember, we're dealing with a second derivative now, not a first derivative. So this doesn't tell us any more about increasing and decreasing. It tells us about concavity. And when I have positive values, I get something that is concave up. When I have negative values, I get something concave down. And when I have positive values, I get something that is concave up. So I have figured out now what my concavity is, if it's concave up or down, just by looking at this number line for my second derivative. Now I can just write down my answer that f is concave up on uh, two intervals, from negative infinity to 0 and uh, from 1 to positive infinity. Also, uh, f is concave down on just the interval from 0 to 1. And that is my answer.